Segment 17, Wien's Law and the Stefan Boltzmann Law. If you take an opaque object, like a rock or a piece of metal, and you start to heat it up, as it gets hotter and hotter, it will start to glow red and then orange and eventually even white and then blue. This phenomenon is a phenomenon that we refer to as the behavior of a, what we call a black body, which is a, a perfect opaque object. Here you see on the left an illustration showing rock in the form of this volcano and some of the hot molten rock coming down glowing in this bright orange color because it's still hot. And on the right side, an opaque filament, a piece of metal, inside of a light bulb. And when a current passes through it and heats it up, it starts to glow bright orange, generating the light that we get from a normal old-fashioned light bulb. The scientific definition of a black body is an opaque object that totally absorbs all electromagnetic radiation that hits it. Bodies that absorb all this radiation also emit radiation based on their temperature. All black bodies radiate at all wavelengths, so even a cool rock that's sitting next to you will be radiating in the, in the visible but so little light that you can't see it. And it's certainly radiating at infrared wavelengths and into the radio as well. Because black bodies have this unique property, the only descriptive characteristic of a black body is its temperature. Hotter black bodies radiate more than cool ones at each wavelength, and they radiate much more at shorter wavelengths than cooler ones do. In this figure, you see a plot showing this shape of black bodies. All of these are described by the same mathematical function with only one thing changed, which is the temperature that goes into it. You see intensity on the y-axis and wavelength in microns on the x-axis. And here we have three black body curves of different bodies with different temperatures. And shown also is the wavelength range of visible light from the blue at a little less than half a micron to the red at about two-thirds of a micron. A 3,000 degree black body, something that's characteristic of a cool star, radiates, as you see, less in the blue than it does in the red, which is why cool stars look red. A 6,000 degree black body, approximately the temperature of the sun, radiates fairly evenly in the blue and the red, peaking in the yellow, and that's why a star like the sun looks yellow. A hot star, a 12,000 degree star, has its peak in the ultraviolet, and its intensity is dropping rapidly through the visible wavelength range, so it's much stronger in the blue than the red, and this star will appear blue to the eye. We can use two simplifications of the black body law function to characterize black bodies. One of them is called Wien's law, which states that the peak wavelength, the wavelength where, where that black line peaks, is equal to a constant, 0 0.0029, divided by the temperature, where the temperature is in degrees Kelvin, that is degrees above absolute zero, and the wavelength is in meters. That is, radiation from hotter objects peaks at shorter wavelengths. If T is bigger, lambda is smaller. So let's give an exa a few examples. If we took a black ball and dipped it in liquid nitrogen, it would have a temperature of 77 degrees above absolute zero, and its maximum wavelength, the wavelength of its peak, would be 38 microns, about 70 times the, the wavelength of visible light. A human body, one of our bodies, uh, is about 300 degrees uh, above absolute zero, and its peak is at about 10 microns, 9.7 microns. A pizza oven is about 600 degrees above absolute zero in Kelvin temperature, and its peak is at about 5 microns. The sun, which is about 5,500 degrees above absolute zero, has its peak in the yellow at about 530 nanometers. The Stefan Boltzmann law relates the temperature of a black body to the amount of power it emits per unit area. The law says F is equal to sigma t to the fourth, where sigma is a constant, the Stefan Boltzmann constant, and t is again the temperature in units of degree Kelvin. Because of this t to the fourth dependence, it means that something that's twice as hot radiates 16 times as much per unit area, because 2 to the fourth power, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, is 16. So to give a few examples of this, the same black ball in liquid nitrogen at 77 degrees would emit about 2 watts per square meter. A human body would 
uh, em emits about 460 watts per square meter. A pizza oven emits about 7.4 kilowatts per square meter, and the sun about 5 megawatts per square meter. If you want to calculate the total amount of power emitted by an opaque object, you use the Stefan Boltzmann law that says the power per unit area is sigma t to the fourth, and you multiply it by the area. So for a sphere, that's 4 pi r squared. So the total emission from a, from a, a sphere is 4 pi r squared times sigma t to the fourth. If you wanted, for example, to, commit, to compute how much power your professor emits, uh, you would take his area, so he's about a half a meter wide and about two meters tall, and he has two sides, so each side is about a square meter, so between the two of them, he's about two square meters, and if we go back to the previous slide, we see that he's emitting about 460 watts per square meter, so that's almost a thousand watts, about a kilowatt. A, a kilowatt is a thousand joules a second, and joules are the same as 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 uh, joule, there's about 4.2 uh, joules per calorie, so that's about 250 calories uh, a second. These are actually what we would call uh, kilocalories in in the food world, but it's still quite a lot. It's a very very large amount of of power. So why is it that I don't have to eat constantly in order to provide this energy? And the reason has to do with the fact that everything around me is warm and I'm absorbing radiation as well as emitting it. So let me give a few definitions that will become in useful later on. Luminosity is a, an amount of energy put out per second that's intrinsic to a source. So a source's luminosity is how much energy it's put out per second. Flux is the energy through a unit area in one second. And it depends on where you are and when you measure it. So when we talk about the luminosity of, of your professor, that's uh, intrinsic to me. And my luminosity is the same whether you're standing here or a mile away from me. But the flux that you measure from my emission depends on whether you measure it close to me or far away, because that emission gets spread out over a larger area as it moves farther away.